All right, what's up everyone? So one common debate online and amongst people that are experts is usually what are, what's better, free weights or machines? And I think there are many ways to look at it and it depends on the lens in which you're looking at it through. My personal take on this is that machines are far superior than free weights for a number of reasons and I'll explain two of the main reasons, okay? The first reason is that when you are using machines, there is an accommodating resistance that you don't get with dumbbells and free weights to the same degree with precision or accuracy, okay? So when you're using a machine, there's something called a cam, this thing that rotates here. Everything rotates around this axis, okay? And what this essentially does is 50% of the equation in torque. The other 50% of the equation in torque is the weight on the stack, okay? So the weight on the stack is what you select, but this accommodates the resistance throughout the excursion, throughout the range of motion. Now, why do you want an accommodating resistance throughout the range of motion? Because your muscle has a strength profile within it, okay? And a strength profile is what your muscle can tolerate throughout the various ranges of motion. So you don't want an even resistance from start to finish. You actually want a variable resistance from start to finish to accommodate what your muscle can tolerate. That way you can reach the point of failure or fatigue much quicker and much more efficiently. That's the first reason. Some machines by design are much better than others. Some brands have better biomechanists and engineers designing these machines. So not all machines are superior than free weights. But for the most part, if the machine is designed and engineered very well, it's going to be far better than using any free weight dumbbell or uh, barbell, especially where your hands are fixed. Now, the second reason why machines are superior to dumbbells, especially, or barbells, is that you have a constant resistance. Whether that resistance offloads or onloads is another story, um, which goes back to my first point. But let's say you have a dumbbell, for example, okay? And we're using a dumbbell use a dumbbell curl for example so as i'm doing a dumbbell curl this dumbbell the only challenge this dumbbell poses is downward because of gravity okay so the dumbbell always wants to go down now whenever you're rotating around a joint okay as i'm moving around a joint what's happening is that there are mul it's multi-directional okay as i'm going up i'm actually going forward then i'm going upward then i'm going backward with this dumbbell because everything is moving around an axis that's why torque is very important in this equation. Torque is the effectiveness of a force, okay? Um, it's not a twisting force, it's an effect of a force. So as I'm coming up, the resistance only wants to pull one way. That's why I can hold this dumbbell here for an hour, okay? I can hold this dumbbell here for an hour and there's no challenge to my bicep. The reason why I can't hold it here for an hour to my bicep is because my shoulder or my lower back or my grip or something will essentially give up. The same thing here, if I'm holding a dumbbell down here, I can hold a thousand pound dumbbell here and my bicep will never give out. Sure, my tendons, my ligaments, uh, my shoulder, my obliques, all these, my grip strength will give out, but my biceps will never give out because there is a zero moment arm. There's no torque being produced at this joint relative to the bicep having to be worked. So why do we care about that? Well, to some degree, this is good because as I said, there's a variable resistance. Resistance needs to change to be congruent with the strength profile of the muscle, what your muscle can tolerate within specific ranges of motion. The problem is there's only a real challenge in certain ranges where gravity is being uh, challenged because of the weight of the dumbbell being pulled down. But when I'm using a preacher curl machine, for example, let's go over here. We'll go over our preacher curl machine. It's here. There's resistance here, there's resistance here, there's resistance here, and there's resistance all the way up here. There's a constant resistance as I'm going up from start to finish. So the resistance never stops. And that's a good thing as long as the resistance is accommodating. So the resistance profile is changing relative to my strength profile. We don't want a zero resistance. So I never really want to essentially have a dumbbell and be able to hold it down here or hold it here for a long time or hold it here for a long time and never really have zero challenge. Although the profile of the muscle changes, the strength profile, what the muscle can tolerate changes, it never changes from being able to tolerate a lot to being able to tolerate nothing, okay? It has a tolerance at every specific range and we want that to be accommodated through having a machine. So a machine does that for you. Right? A machine actually allows you to go through different ranges of motion and to have challenge through different ranges of motion. Now, why do we care about that? Well, we care about that 
because we're able to achieve the goal of fatigue much quicker. The reason why we're training in a bodybuilding setting, a resistance training setting is to build muscle, okay? And if we wanna build muscle and change the shape and look of our body, we wanna to get to the point of fatigue quicker because fatigue is the only real measure or metric that we have to use, the golden standard that we're trying to achieve within the training session to elicit adaptations, okay? And if we can't achieve fatigue, we are never going to elicit adaptations. If we never achieve fatigue, we are never pushing our body to its limitation, which means we're never getting the benefit of the training ses sessions or cycles. Okay, so I hope that helps. Those two reasons why I believe machines are far superior than dumbbells.